Okay, so we are right here at Spanish Lookout Key. We'll be heading southeast to get down to the southern end of Turnaf. So that's it, that's what we're doing today. Are you ready, bud? You look ready. You're like a warrior. Yeah, yeah. Buddy. Today we are gonna go off on an expedition. So we've been in Key Cocker for, has been like two and a half weeks. Mm -hmm. And I've just been editing a bunch of episodes because we really wanted to give ourselves two weeks so that we could go explore the offshore atolls. So this is a chart of the uh, barrier reef for northern Belize. Um, here we are right here at Key Cocker. We've been told that the best snorkeling, the best free diving, and just generally what is the coolest thing about Belize is the three offshore atolls. So you've got Turnef right here, you've got Lighthouse Reef right there, and then Glover's Reef to the south. Basically an atoll is where there used to be an island there, and then coral grew around the you know perimeter of the island. Then the island was a combination of erosion, so the island went down and the sea level went up, so the island's no longer there. But as the sea level rises, the coral continues to rise with it. And so what's left is the island is completely gone, but there's a ring of coral around what used to be the island that kind of comes up out of the deep ocean. And then there's an inner lagoon that can be shallow or deep. So anyway, these atolls are offshore, they're outside of the barrier reef. The water around them is anywhere from one to 2,000 feet deep. And so that creates a really neat environment and ecosystem for everything under the water because you've got all that sort of nutrient-rich deep water just coming up to this real shallow coral reef area. So you get sharks, you get tons of different types of fish, and you get protected areas for the boat to anchor because you can actually get inside of the, of the ring of coral. But for the most part, you're away from civilization. So two weeks is about the maximum amount of time we can go on our water supply. So when we came into Belize, we came in through this eastern channel here and then came north up through this shallow area and up through Porto Stuck. So that's what we're gonna do today in reverse. We're gonna go back down to Spanish Lookout, and then tomorrow morning, we're gonna go out the Eastern Channel and head southeast to the southern end of Turnef. These three atolls, in addition to Chinchuro Bank, which is a, a atoll in Mexico, um, are the only four atolls in the Western Hemisphere, as far as I understand. So that would be cool to see something that's truly unique in the Caribbean. You can see we got some squalls on our port side to the east and uh, we'll probably get nailed by one or two of those. We've got a lot of islands around here so if, if it looks like it might be a little gnarly we could always just anchor for a little bit let it pass by us but otherwise beautiful day for sailing. That thing's getting pretty close. Let's get the Motor turned on and the Genoa down. Alright, so we're probably going to get hit by this squall here in the next, uh, I don't know, 10 minutes maybe, maybe even five. Um, so up ahead, we've got Long Key. It's a slightly protected anchorage, so we're just going to sail up for that and then drop the hook and let all this pass by us. Um, you can see there's squalls all around us. And so I wouldn't be surprised if this squall line would be relatively short-lived. I'm gonna start reefing now. So, all right, let's do it. Okay, bring up the RPMs to 2400. Okay. So you can see, this thing's just about on us. So we're gonna try and drop the hook here. So these are our lazy 
jacks and uh, they're retractable. So they live like this. They go along the boom and up the mast when we're not using them. And when we want to be prepared to douse the main real quick, then we deploy them. You can see they run up. We got three of them or they split, splits off into three. We deploy either side and then the main is ready to come down at a moment's notice. Go ahead and take the helm. You see it up there? We're about to get nailed by it, okay? Yeah. So we're all good in here? Yeah. Okay. calm down a little bit so it's nice um, and I was starting to get a heat headache so that is gone <laughs> and the boat's getting a little bit clean which is nice so yeah it's actually kind of pleasant well that was enjoyable I say that because there wasn't a lot of wind so things didn't get all that crazy but that was nice got a little rinse down and why didn't we just uh, motor through it isn't that bad? Be, I know. Well, because I don't want to go through this pass. Oh, gosh. Gotcha. So and it's, it's coming up. Yeah, we're basically stalling. Yeah. I mean, we came here in case it was going to be real windy. Mm -hmm. But even with it not being windy, I wouldn't have wanted... I mean, look, you can't see anything. You can't you can't tell how the, the colors of the water. So, And this one is called Porto Stuck. So it's like... It's, it's a place where people get stuck a lot, you know? One of our friends that we met the other day ran aground there. So... Anyway, so we're, we're, I'll just wait another couple minutes for this cloud to pass by and we'll get back underway. So lunch was delicious and I was just throwing away some of our scraps overboard and um, I noticed that we have our little fish friends with us. They joined us in Key Cocker. We've been calling them homies. Um, there's been two of them and recently we had another one. So we have three homies hanging along with us on Atticus. And they're still with us, so I'm gonna feed them a little bit. Hopefully they'll come with us all the way to the atolls. They're so cute. Got a little bit of leftover oatmeal. There's one, you see him? Hee <laughs> hee, I'm so glad they're with us. The homies are with us. Well, we've got a teeny little channel to get through with a huge barge. showed up we're approaching Spanish lookout K and uh, I'm I've been kind of trying to practice doing everything myself single-handed so that I could teach you Desiree how to do that because I'm just still getting good enough to do it myself I'm gonna try and get uh, drop the anchor under sail not turn the engine on so next I'm going to uh, get up close douse the jib and then uh, try and sail up under just the main and then drop the anchor. The problem is we don't have a roller furling for the jib. If we did, this would be a whole lot simpler. So I basically, with the head sail still up, got us so that where I wanted to anchor was basically a beam of us. And uh, that way I'm able to sail there under the main alone. Um, the boat will sail to windward with just the main, sort of. Like it'll sail on a close reach, but real slow. Yeah, we're moving at three and a half knots under just the full main. Once I get to where I'm happy, 
I'm gonna head up into the wind and let the sheet out all the way until we lose all our way, until the boat stops moving forward, and then I'll drop the anchor. So basically at this point, I'm waiting for the bow to fall off right now. You just feel the bow just slowly turning a little bit. We're no longer facing into the wind. start sailing. Well that was cool. Mm -hmm. Solo anchoring under sail. And it wasn't that hectic, it was easy if you just kind of do everything, it, you know, if nothing goes wrong. <laughs> so 25 feet and I'll want a 7 to 1 scope because this is pretty light chain. So I almost treat it like it's a nylon road. 25 times 7 is 175 um, and uh, we do increments of 20 feet so I'll go to 180. Our color coding is uh, rub your balls with grease so red, yellow, blue, white, green and so we want 180 so that's 2, 4, 6, 8, 1, 120, 140, 160, 180 so that's the second um, white. There's a yellow, there's a blue, there's a white, so there you go. That's 180 feet right there. Okay, we made it. That was a great day. Um, so Desiree, uh, the best wife in the world, she just made me what we've been calling a don't panic. The ingredients are, it's basically a gin and tonic, but with Campari. And you can add as much as you want, you know what I mean? You can do a splash, you can do what I do, which is add quite a bit, because I really like that bitter kind of flavor. Um, but man, and then we got some ice before we left. Oh. Tomorrow we get to go, you know, explore this off the beaten path gem of the Caribbean. I can't wait. Cheers, everybody. All right, so we are ready to rock. We've got the dinghy. Uh, on the cabin top because we are going to be going outside the reef. Yes, we got four hours Mas o menos till we get to turn F so a little half day sail offshore ready to get out to sea When I think about the way we used to be When I think about the things it took from me I know that I am so Six and a half knots. We're in the main shipping channel right now. I mean, man, it feels great because we're just, we're on a close haul or close reach, pretty hard on the wind and uh, just booking and it's just nice and calm. We're making our way up the uh, main shipping channel of Belize, the Eastern channel, and uh, the wind is going right down the channel. So we are tacking, beating up the channel. And it's a nice day for it, you know, it's like maybe, 14, 15 knots of wind. And so I'm practicing like I've been doing with, you know, setting the anchor and, and bringing up the anchor and getting underway. I'm trying to get good at doing everything on the boat by myself, single-handed. And uh, so I'm getting better at tacking single-handed. And I got pretty good at that on the way here with the wind vane, and now I'm working on it with the uh, electronic autopilot. All right, so here's the process for me tacking by myself. Um, first thing that I do is uh, I get the lazy sheet and I get it taut on the cleat and then make it so that I don't lose any of that. And then I grab the handle for the cleat and get it on so that that's totally ready to go. Then I've got the electronic autopilot that's steering and I haven't figured out how to just use the tack button yet. So I just turn it on standby and take it off basically tack the boat over and then as the boat's tacking I let the jib 
stay attached on the you know starboard side so that the back winded jib helps the boat come around and then I boom turn the electronic autopilot back on get rid of that jib sheet and take up on this one and we're good the real trick to it is hitting that that auto button on the electronic autopilot at just the right time when we've effectively come around through the wind and we're, we're right on that close haul that I want to be. You know, I really enjoy getting good at doing stuff single-handed on Atticus. Like, it's fun and it's also just really like empowering. And then once we get Desiree up to speed on that same page, it will be a pretty unstoppable duo at that point. of Turnef is right over here and we're, it's, we're closer than it appears. We're probably about only a mile off and we're just paralleling the coast heading to the spot where we enter into the lagoon and Desiree and I were just talking about how like this has got to be probably the most comfortable sailing we've ever done. We're protected by this land mass so it's nice and calm. Probably 14 knots of wind. I'm standing up here on the bowsprit. Normally, if you come up here, you better be ready to do battle, man, because you're bouncing all over the place. I feel like a bucking bronco up here, but now it's just totally calm. I can just like kind of lean against the forestay. There's Desiree. I guess that's just how it is, right? Like nine out of 10 times when you're sailing, it's like, it's all right, you know, probably. More like eight out of 10, it's all right. One out of 10, it's awful. And one out of 10, it's just amazing. <laughs> and I think today is one of those one out of 10, it's just amazing days. There's Desiree's new favorite hangout spot. Just about to the entrance into the atoll. Um, so you might be able to make out that we're real close to shore here. It's like 700 feet deep, it's crazy. We're less than a mile off. And right in there is the creek that we'll take. Uh, they call it uh, Blue Creek. And you can look right here. So we're, we're somewhere up here. We're gonna come in and head into Blue Creek into the mangrove islands and then we'll be inside the lagoon of the southern portion of the atoll head south and then anchor just to the east of this cape big cape ochel as you can see we're right next to the reef this she says is really good snorkeling there's really good uh diving down here and so we'd be kind of in it There's our cut way over there. That's that's Blue Creek. And we've got some shallows coming up here, so we're gonna have to be real careful getting between here and there. Cruising guide said it's only about five to six feet, so we're just gonna make it over the bar. Yeah, okay, so now we're we're heading right in there, and this is where it's starting to get a little shallow. What's the depth? 21. 21 feet, okay. All right, but let me know if the depth gets below 10 feet. Okay. okay. All right, so there's the aerial view. Looks like we're pretty clear. So, bud, yeah. when we go through, favor the right-hand side. Okay. It, it looks like it shoals up to port. Okay, here we go. So we got steak to our port and starboard. We got six inches under the keel right now. So, Rousher was right on that. Okay, what's the depth? 6.7. Nice. Okay, head a little to port. You got some shallow stuff over here on starboard. Nice, okay, we made it through.
So you can see this is Blue Creek. And uh, it's definitely a nice calm day over here, that's for sure. Okay, bud, so with this island coming up, stay on the port side. I can't believe that we're on an a in an offshore atoll right now. Like, this isn't a part of the mainland at all. You know, this is all just out in the middle of the Caribbean. That's so cool. Okay, now a little to starboard. Okay, so we're coming up on our anchorage. You can see that's the uh, Turnef Island Lodge Resort behind us. There it is. And uh, something I wanna show you guys before we drop the hook is this is a tool I use all the time. Now, a lot of people say that you have to have radar, you have to have AIS, you have to have a lot of stuff, but this thing will get you through a lot of situations safely. And what I'm gonna, it's a hand bearing compass. What I'm actually gonna use it for right now is our cruising guide. Uh, by Freya Rauscher says that they anchored 400 yards east southeast of the lodge. So I'm going to use this to know when we're east southeast, and then we'll know basically, okay, this is roughly where they anchored, and then we can kind of look around from there. But it'll be nice to know exactly where we are, get our bearings. So the resort is southwest of us, so we are northeast of it. We want to be east southeast of the resort, so we're going to wait. We're going to keep cruising forward until our hand bearing compass reads west northwest, which would look like that. All right, so we got a little ways to go. Okay, so there's the reef right over there, maybe like 400 yards away. We are basically east of the island and a touch to the south. So right around here is about where the author of the guide dropped their anchor. Whew, all right. Desiree's a little hot. Hot! I'm a little hot. It's hot here. There's not a lot of wind right now. But we made it. So there's uh, Turnef Island Lodge off in the background. And then in front of us, and like not very far in front of us, is the reef. So we'll, we'll see what it's like anchoring behind just reef. Like it's a weird feeling. Look, that's the ocean there. <laughs> to windward, it just you just see the Caribbean. And uh, we'll see how that goes, especially if like a squall comes by. That's my main concern. Right now it's very comfortable and the weather is supposed to be good all week. But if a squall comes through, that could kind of like make things a little more interesting. So, all right, we're going to go dive on the anchor and then, uh, and then cool down before we have some, don't panic. Don't panic. pretty well. I think it dug in real nicely for the bottom here. The problem is just like San Pedro, and I think we're going to experience this a lot near reefs, is that there's like a, a thin layer of sand 
and then and then like limestone or like some sort of like flat stone bottom and uh so trying to find a spot where like there's actually enough sand for the anchor to dig in but but yet not too much grass because if there's too much grass then that network of roots doesn't really let the anchor penetrate either so it was trying to find just the a happy medium and i think we found one yeah today was an awesome day um jordan pretty much took the reins and I just kind of had a rest day, which was awesome. Um, it's nice to just be like laying down, listening to an audiobook, and the next thing you know, you're in this awesome, beautiful place. Um, and uh, yeah, it was actually really fun diving on the anchor because I was getting distracted by all the little fish that I saw on our way out there. So I'm really excited to get out there and do some snorkeling soon. <laughs> oh man, all right, well, that was a long day, but now we are officially in paradise. I am so stoked. I got my cushion out here, my my big pillow that we keep all of our winter clothes in, and I got my Kindle. So I'm drinking my uh, Don't Panic out of this nice uh, insulated mug today. So cheers, everybody. Cheers from paradise. Oh. I'm gonna ask you what if it what if this is what sailing was always like? And then you should say what you said before. Okay. Yeah, what do you think, bud? Do you wish sailing was always like this? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I thought you were gonna say what if I thought you were gonna say what if <laughs> I thought you were gonna say what if sailing was always like this. Not do you wish sailing was always like this. Okay. Right. Jordan told me to be filming him dropping the hook, but I thought I'd film myself. 